If you are interested in finding out how you can use your own personal webcam for head tracking in the most popular sim racing titles, you have come to the right place. I will be going over two ways of getting this done, a free way and a paid way. Then I will be going over the differences between the two methods, and lastly, I will be going over what type of webcam would be the best to use in this situation. Let's jump right in. Before we begin, I would always recommend setting your camera on the top middle of your monitor for the best performance possible. If you don't want to pay a single penny, you're in the right chapter. We're going to need the following programs. Those being OpenTrack, which you will download here, and AI Track, which you will download here. After those are done downloading, let's create a new folder on our desktop and extract the zip files there. Go into the install folder and open up the application. For the input method, select UDP over network. Next, click the hammer and copy the port and hit OK. Don't close out the application just yet. Now open AI Track, hit Configure. To get the most out of your webcam, make sure you have the following settings. Have your width set to 640, your height to 480, and your FPS value to 60, even if your camera doesn't support 60 FPS. Move over to the right hand side now and select Use Open Track and paste your port. Set your distance to 0.5 your camera FOV to 56. For the best response time, select fast, and if it's already not checked, make sure to enable landmark stabilization. Enabling this will help the camera's tracking performance. The last one is up to you, but you can set auto check for updates off. We're almost finished here. Hit apply, close the window, and select start tracking. Let's head back to the open track application and finish configuring our setup. Click on the hammer next to input and make sure you have the same settings as I do. For your output source, make sure you have FreeTrack 2.0 Enhanced enabled. No need to do any further adjustments to this. For your filter, make sure you have the Excella filter enabled. Then click on the hammer next to filter and then copy the settings I have. Go over to the options section on the right. From here, you can set your centering key. This can be any button on your wheel or it can be any key that you want on your keyboard. Move over to the output tab and disable everything besides yaw. Hit OK and then we'll finish up with the mapping settings. Within your yaw section, make sure you have your maximum input set to 90 degrees and you have the following curve. You'll also want to enable asymmetric mapping as well. If you're only planning on using this for sim racing only, I would highly suggest you have your set curve below or at 40 degrees. As setting this above 40 degrees will likely decrease your immersion as your driver will twist his head like the exorcist. You don't want that. Now we're ready to get started. On open track, hit start. And if you're playing ACC, AC, R Factor 2, you won't need to do anything else besides change your in-game camera settings until you see your driver is moving his head in the game. If you're playing Automobilisa 2 or any other game that will allow you to launch in Steam VR mode, make sure you do that. It's the same deal for Dirt Rally 2. If you are only interested in the free method, make sure you hit that like button and check out this review on the budget friendly handbrake video here. But if you want to see the differences between the free version and the 3 euro version, make sure you click on the following timestamp here. You'll be surprised by the differences. If you're watching this part, this means that you have decided to use the paid version. If you haven't done so already, you can purchase FaceTrack No IR by clicking on the Buy Now button on their website and entering your information. You'll receive an email link with a download link. And once you've downloaded the program and installed the program, go back to their website, download the plugins here, and then install the files. We're only a few clicks away from getting started with head tracking now. Run face track no IR now. And for your tracker source, select face API. Click on the settings. Select roll, pitch, and yaw, and deselect everything else. Click OK. Select the Excella filter MK2 on settings and use the following rotational translation settings. Ensure to have your reduction factor set to 100. This will give us the best stability possible. Hit OK, click on short keys. From here, we can assign the center button to any button you want on your wheel or on your keyboard. After that's all set, now go to curves and set rotations to the following. Then move over to translations and set the following X, Y, and Z and hit OK. Ensure to only invert your pitch and lastly select free track 2.1 for the game protocol. Now we're ready to get started. If you're playing ACC, AC, R Factor 2, you won't need to do anything else besides change your in game camera settings until your driver is moving his head. If you're playing Automobilista 2, Dirt Rally 2.0, or any other sim racing title that supports VR, make sure you launch the game in Steam VR mode. 
This will enable the head tracking to work in games with this feature. So what are the differences between the free version and the paid version? One of the main differences I have noticed between the two is performance and the amount of movement allowed. Furthermore, the paid version offers a far simpler approach to getting the program up and running. There is no need to run any other program besides FaceTrack No IR. As with the free version, you'll need to run two separate applications. On the feature side, with OpenTrack, I wasn't able to get the camera to allow for the pitch and roll settings. I know that all cameras are different, so if you find a way of setting up the pitch and roll method with the free versions, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. But with the paid version, it worked flawlessly. This is most likely due to the tracker source method used between the two, with the paid version giving us a slightly more immersive experience. And with it only being less than 4 euros, this is not a bad deal. Furthermore, the free version has a slightly longer delay between when you move your head and when it moves in game. This again is likely due to the tracker source and depending on what type of camera you are running, your experience can either be worse or better. The higher the FPS your camera supports, the better your experience will be, no matter whether you're using the free version or the paid version. One of the best cameras you can use for head tracking is the PlayStation Eye camera. You can usually find these cameras pretty cheap on eBay, so I highly suggest you check those cameras out. I first started using head tracking about four months into sim racing but I wanted a smoother experience. I found the webcam I had wasn't doing enough for me, so now I use a Tobii Eye Tracker instead of a webcam. Combine that with Face Track No AR, it gives one of the most responsive experiences you can have. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in buying, make sure you watch my Before You Finance video for a more in-depth analysis. And for a chance to win Face Track No AR at no cost to you. Lastly, one of the downsides from using the free or paid version is that there are still times where your head won't track, which could cause you to have a negative experience with head tracking. On the downside with the paid version, well, it's paid. But if you can get your hands on a few bucks, the free version still gives a very nice experience. And if you ever decide to upgrade, you know what video to come back and watch. Head tracking definitely makes sim racing a much more immersive and enjoyable experience in my opinion. It gives me a much better sensation of speed because I'm able to turn, look, and see everything coming up behind me, to my left, to the right, everywhere. And one of the biggest benefits to this is being able to extend that field of view. And if you're only running on one screen, this is sure to definitely help that. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next upload as we break down one of the most exciting races you'll see between a 700,000 pound McLaren and a 500,000 pound Jaguar. Which team will be the winner of the $1 million prize and will it be enough to earn a return on their investment? Find out next time as we break down the meaning of ROI and how you can apply it in your own life. And as always, Simfin here, peacing out.